Good morning, everyone. This is Ifat, your G Plus go to gal. And after a long break of being all over the world, we are starting again with this awesome, awesome show. Uh, today, we are talking about being a player in the global market. And not only a player, but actually, how do you position yourself to be the authority in your market in the global sphere? Um, in the world, in the internet. And some would say that you already are a player because of the internet, and it kind of flattens the world. So how do you take it to the next level, understand the cultures, know how to interact with people in different countries? Um, that's what we're going to talk about today. And to do that, we have with us the amazing Katya Berry from Germany. Hey, Katya. Hey. Thank you so much for being with us. This is great. I'm so excited. Yeah, thank you so much for, for inviting me. So yeah, it is going to be a very, very, very interesting discussion today. Yes, because we have a lot of people actually from all over the world who have been doing business all over the world. So it will be an awesome discussion with everyone. Um, let me tell you guys a little bit about Katya. So she is um, an expert. She became an international business and expert coach. Um, she has been living in three different countries, am I right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> three different countries. And um, she has been dealing on a business level with, um, with different people in different countries. She is um, helping businesses establish the relationship with foreign clients, expand businesses overseas, and create the most of international experiences. She is known as the Global Attitude Architect, and all her work is based on her own personal and professional global experience. This is a word, Kathy. I just learned from you. An expat? Is that how you pronounce it? Expat, yes. It's short for expatriate. Which, by the way, you are an expat, Yifat. <laughs> and I didn't even know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually learned it up. I had to look it up. And expat means that you are living in a different country, right? And you are um, working as a foreigner in that country that you live in? Correct. Yeah, the expatriate or the term expatriate means uh, that the person lives well, uh, resides outside of their um, country of residence. But there is there is that fine line that people draw in an expat and an immigrant. You so the people who uh, who go out abroad to work, you know, on project uh, based kind of criteria. So diplomats or people go to work there with companies and they bring their company, uh, uh, families with them and they go for two, three years. Those people prefer to use the term expat because it kind of emphasizes the fact that they're there and they're privileged to have to live this, well, what some might call a luxurious privileged <laughs> life and you know all their bills are being paid for by the company and the kids go to international schools and you get the fantastic health care and you get you know five or six different flights back home or somewhere else. Whereas, you know, an immigrant is somebody who goes abroad in search of a better lifestyle, a better life or work. So, you know, I'm not really sure how those interlap and where. I mean, I'm an expat in a sense, but then on the other hand, I don't think that I will ever go back home now, like to leave permanently. So perhaps maybe I am an immigrant in some way or another. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Well, I feel the same way. I'm uh, originally from Israel and been in the U.S. for 14 years. I can't really see myself going back. The mentality is different. And, um, and I think that's what we're going to talk about today is how do you communicate with people with different mentalities, different backgrounds, different cultures. But um, before we get into that, Katya, Katya I really want to know how did you get to where you are today? Um, what led you to becoming, to becoming an expert in international business? <laughs> Well, let me give you a little bit uh, of my personal background because I think a lot kind of will explain why I do what I do. So I originally come from Russia, from Moscow, and uh, I was born at the end of the 70s, so I still remember the communist um, era of my country, so that's a huge experience. So it was for me when I was a kid. Uh, my little brother doesn't remember this, you know, that's there's a... Six years difference and a completely different person he is. So, and then at the age of 15, at the early 90s, uh, my mom and dad saw an opportunity to send me to start uh, to study abroad. So I went to the to the UK and um, I lived there for nine years. Thus, you can hear a bit of my accent coming through. 
Um, yeah, and basically I went to school there in university and I started my first uh, proper work experience, my first job I had there. And I met my future husband, who um, actually is British of an Irish origin, <laughs> and and his family is very international. You know, they have people uh, who kind of married into the family from France and Japan and Ghana. I mean, seriously, we're talking about like proper international family. And um, and then we moved to Germany because of my husband's uh, job. So there you go. So that gives you a little bit of an understanding, you know, of my personal level. And uh, and then so since we've been here, we became parents, which, you know, great and wonderful and all of that. And our kids are now aged uh, six and four. They're actually trilingual. And I have to say they're absolutely brilliant. And, and it's a big, it's a completely different job uh, bringing up trilingual TCKs. That's another term that you might not be familiar with, is that? Uh, third culture child, so that's a child that's been born outside of mom's and dad's place. Okay, we are live again, hopefully, for the rest of the show. Hey, Rashid, you made it crack, yay. Um, so, Katya, we were talking about international business and how you were finding out your passion, really, and what you wanted to do. And it started with people saying you have all the qualifications, but. So, how did the but turn into a business? Yeah, well, I looked into what I could offer. I mean, for me, being an expat, so we always like sitting and waiting, well, kind of assuming that we could be on the move yet again. Uh, I knew that whatever it is that I wanted to do, it had to be portable, right? So I couldn't open a bar or a school or a, you know, or a gym or any, anything like that. It had to be something that I could take with me. So I looked at to what, what I did before, <laughs> what I could, you know, my experiences. And more, most, important, most importantly, it had to be something that would fit in around my new life, my new life as a, you know, now trailing mom. <laughs> I suppose. And um, yeah, so I started off working with expats, um, and particularly with trailing spouses, as I mentioned before. And then people started reaching out and they're saying, hey, you work with expat coach. You know, I'm not, I'm not an expat. In fact, I've never left my country, but can you get me a foreign client? And I was like, okay, I've never thought about it, but I could. You know, and then more people started coming my way. It's like I would really like to expand abroad. I'd really like to have more foreign clients. How do I do that? Can you introduce me to the circles of experts and other people that you know? And this is how I started working with uh, entrepreneurs and small and small businesses. Particularly, I I, I do concentrate. I have to. I will stress this out that I do concentrate uh, my strength only on um, sort of individual or very very small teams. Um, because I find that there is a lot of information available for big businesses or sort of medium-sized businesses, but it's really it's small business in, uh, and entrepreneurs who struggle when it comes to going overseas. Because I personally, I don't know, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but I personally don't or can't find much information available for this particular niche for this type of people out there right now. No, you're absolutely right. And also, you know, there's a difference when you come in as, you know, Ifat or you come in as Coca-Cola and you try to find, right, you try to find clients yeah. and brands and people to partner with and what if your language is not the same or you're not using the right terms, you know, how do you get yourself established? And so this is really what you've done. Can you talk about your own journey of how you establish yourself as the expert in a different country? Well, absolutely. Well, I suppose... Uh, the the first thing for me it it's it's the outreach is the fact that you know I do actually go and talk to people <laughs> I don't sit there quietly you know talking to myself or my friends I'm quite open and I and I'll tell people all about what I do and I'll be honest with you Holger by the way my German is not great <laughs> after nine years of being in Germany my German really is is nowhere near as good as my English <laughs> and. Um, but I do, I still, I still try, you know, when people ask me what I do or how I can help them or anything, I actually try to explain and try to um, tell them why it is important, not, not only, you know, why I do it, but why it is important. And it is important because what you've been saying before is that, that sometimes people misinterpret the world cu culture, 
people say culture and automatically there are two things that pop into our minds. It's A is the geographical location and B is the language and that's it. And culture is not just that. Culture is so much more than that. It's food, it's drink, it's the collection of all the uh, the natural resources and the historical folk stories that we have collected. You know, it's, culture is something that we are born with into the world as an individual, a part of the society around us, but also, you know, our parents and our uh, local places influence a bit of that culture into us as we as we grow up. Um, yeah, as well. So, and this is what um, I suppose people, particularly uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners, don't really understand. They think, well, you know, if I go to France, then I have to speak French. Therefore, this is my only limit. Okay, right. I'm not talking about like things such as taxes and legal issues. This is this. I don't actually deal with that, you know. But I can help people find the right people for that. And they right. think, it's oh, you know. Very yeah. It's very nuanced, right? It's very subtle, like the differences. There are even different words in Spanish that you would say in Spain that you wouldn't say in South America that will actually tell people whether you're a foreigner or not, whether you understand, you know, the inner working of the, cult the culture in the, in, the com in the country, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you don't have to go far. Let's talk about English, you know. I mean, in Britain, people, let's talk about pants. We can talk about pants all day long. You know, I mean, my kids, they speak uh, British English. And our friends, they're American. And the kids are absolutely fascinated by the word pants because they always be misinterpreted. You know, because obviously for you guys, you know, for Americans, it's trousers. <laughs> and for, for everybody who comes from the island, it's underwear. So kids are always fascinated, like, take your pants down. I was like, why? Why would I do that? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Katya, what are the benefits of working internationally? Why would anyone even consider taking that leap? and going on a global level and not concentrate on a local field? Mm. Well, apart from the obvious of, you know, reaching a larger audience and, and getting yourself known there and, you know, getting more money for it in return for this, obviously, to me, it actually, it, it means, uh, it, first of all, understanding people around the world. If that's, if, if you're really into this, and then for me, I, I am really into this. I have to say, I get a kick out of interacting with people and making new friends and learning new cultures and, and really knowing, learning about things that I, I didn't know before or I thought I knew. But, you know, it's just that metaphor, you know, that in Italy, for example, everybody eats pizza at all times. Well, we all know it's not true, right? Really. <laughs> and Italians will hate you for saying that. <laughs> um, but really, I mean, so I think... That 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 nowadays, since we do work on the internet, and since most people say, well, you know, I am international because I do work on the internet, and I keep on getting all those uh, clicks to my website from all those places, and maybe I have, you know, uh, one client in Germany and one client in France, therefore I'm international. I'm not sure about that. I mean, to me, it, what it really means is that your your name, your brand, is actually known in that country. You know, within your industry, obviously, within your circles. So, say if you came, like Yifat, okay, if I knew about this and if I work with you, well, that'll be great. And you can go and say, oh, hey, I've got Katya, she's my client in Germany, awesome, you know, fantastic. But, you know, what if, well, not, well, not what if, but, but in truth, it's me and Holga and some other German people, you know, that actually know about you. So, you are known, you are already. A expert, a world figure, an international business representative of your field, or in Germany, you know that we know of. So, if 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 there's anything I want to know about G Plus and Hangouts, I'll go to you. I know where to go. And that so, would to so me. Actually, to so the next question um, that's coming, but hold on. Before that, a little bit housekeeping. You guys that are watching us, if you want to join the Hangout um, and ask any questions of Katya, you can do that in the comments or just go to this website and click on the word Hangout Live, and you can um, join the Hangout. We still have some room. So I see you're watching us. If you want to be in, join us. Um, and if you don't want to be seen and you just have some questions, put them in the comments, and Katya will answer them. Now to the next one is, if I am known in Germany and I have clientele in Germany, but I don't speak German and I don't know the language or the culture or how to behave, is it a good thing for me, actually, to have clients that I don't know anything about? Uh, uh, is it good for you to have clients that you don't know anything about them? 
Right, I, I am not, if I, if I don't speak the language and I don't know the culture, right, and I want to be known in Germany and Japan, and there's just no way I'm going to learn German and Japanese in the next year, um, how can I position myself as an expert still and serve these clients in the way that they need me to serve them, in their culture, in, you know, internalization, translations mm -hmm. of, the, of my content, um, knowing yeah. exactly how they react to things, what can I do to go about that? Well, and that's why internet comes in very, very handy. And you don't actually need to know the language uh, of your foreign partner or customer. You know, I mean, nobody expects you to learn Japanese or German or whatever. It would be nice, of course, if we could, but hey, come on, we are people. We know that it doesn't happen so easily, right? Um, the key here is really before you start interacting with your clients is to find a partner in that place okay whether it's going to be like a working partner or just like a mate like you know like a friend that you can trust who can help you out you've got to figure out for yourself who that person who your first point of contact will be and the whole point of that person that partner that point of contact is that that they can speak the language for you or assist you with finding uh, you know either a translator or somebody who could do maybe like a little uh, international virtual assistant you know this is another great example that you know you might actually want to hire a virtual assistant from that country that speaks your language and that language who can help you with the general administrative setups and legal setups and uh, you know with general communication and then of course you know you as a as a as a yifat, as an entrepreneur you're gonna have to go and invest some time into to learning a little bit more of that, of that culture, and this is this is crucial. This is absolutely crucial because you know you really don't want to make a mess out of yourself when you go there. Because hey, we all know that first impressions count. We don't want to say something that is going to upset those people. You know, we don't want to cause another war. Right? <laughs> yes, no more wars. So, how do you work with your client? You are launching now a new program that's called Foreign Nation and you are helping your clients build international presence. How do you go about doing that? Yeah, uh, well this is this is the, the program that I'm launching for the first time, so uh, the, it, it's going to be it's so, sort of like in a beta mode, I suppose. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to test it out and see what people uh, say about this. But because of those people I told you at the beginning who approached me and asked, and asked me to, to help them expand abroad and find more clients. So um, this program is going to focus on um, on understanding different cultures, cross-cultural communication. I'm going to go quite into, into detail about that, uh, why cultures matter, and also understanding your culture within you and how to actually, you know, as a Russian, how can I go to Israel or, let's say, America and sell myself there, you know, because let's look at it, that all, all of us, we have something unique. And I know that for some of us it sounds, well, you know, like I'm English and my name is James Bond, I mean, you know, that's quite bland. Uh, how do I stand out from the crowd with being English with a name like James Bond? Right. But for somebody, but for somebody, for somebody in France or Japan or Saudi Arabia, you know, that is so exotic, so exciting, you know. So how do you turn that blandness, that boringness, that everyday, uh, you know, that guy or that girl who nobody looks at home, you know, and takes anything of them, and turn into this magnet? That foreigners will go, wow, you know, I want to know what that James Bond's got to sell for himself. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, of course, well, you know, um, I think a lot uh, when when dealing with with international communication and, and general sort of relations, you need to bring real life examples, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to bring lots of examples from my personal and professional experience, and I'm going to I'm going to be uh, sort of all my well, teachings, I suppose, lessons, whatever you want to call it, is going to be based on real case studies. And I'm actually going to make people, I'm going to give them like homework exercises to go out into the world and do certain tasks which would help them to, you know, open that door and sort of guide them to go wherever it is they want to go. And I think one of the things that you were saying on your page is that um, we are enough right now. This is a very interesting concept because we always think, you know, I need to be bigger. I need to be like, I don't know, Coke, <laughs> you know, to start going internationally. I'm just one person that, you know, I have enough to deal with in my own local space. And what you're saying is like, no, you're enough. And actually the internet helps you go out there 
And with your help, and like you said, your connections, your inner circles, the people that you know that you're already introducing other people, um, your clients can take that to the next level and actually expand their business very slowly, right? Gradually, as comfortable as they are, um, and take that to the next level of being known as the expert in your field worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And uh, you know, all of us we have we have different goals, we have different desires, and uh, you know, it's very popular to talk about lifestyle nowadays and uh, a lot of people particularly younger entrepreneurs or those who are you know who, whose kids have already left the nest they they travel a lot more travel is a lot more accessible now and people are looking into ways of, of making money while while being away you know and and some people are actually into having a foreign client so they can go to Italy at the same time and have a holiday at the same time and maybe have like a speaking gig somewhere you know where can, they can expose the, the, themselves to a foreign uh, foreign culture so absolutely absolutely it, it really it really depends what those you know um, how far you want to go outside of your own boundaries because you know I think there is enough market for everyone for any type of niche for any type of industry it's just it all depends where you look. That's true. You know, and actually, I have to tell you, that's my dream. I want to be traveling all over, speaking all over the country, and turning it into a, a travel with a family, a tour with family. Hey, you just been to South America. You can't complain about that. I'm not complaining, dude. Being, uh, <laughs> <laughs> being spoiled by Google is one of the best experiences. Um, so before we open it up to everybody here, because everybody here has some kind of a international experience, which is awesome. I want to hear about your experiences. Let's talk about what being a world leader status. What can that do for someone? Why would someone go for it? Mm, absolutely. Well, I suppose the first the first thing is the fact that you're going to be recognized. You know, it's one of, it's one of those. I don't like I don't really particularly like this term but client attraction methods you know so if people know about you like I told like used you as an example you you know people know about you they automatically go for you they will actually google your name straight away before googling someone else um, and then of course it will give you the the opportunities that I mentioned before as well uh, to travel to get to know other people, to to taste different uh, different lives and to experience different cultures, and who know? I mean, who knows? You might even want to become an expert. You know, you you might actually want to go and live somewhere else. You might want to give your family or, or your children an opportunity to study somewhere else. The world, like they say uh, on the London tube, the world is your oyster. Yeah, that's you, know, true. you just you just open up and, and wait for for the goodness to happen and make whatever you want out of it. Really, I love it, and and this is really what I love about getting to know new people and about Google Plus because now you can actually get to know them face to face without leaving your house. Uh, not to say that it's anything like traveling and getting to know other places, but you can get to know cultures and learn. You know, as you as you build your global world <laughs> title. <Yeah. laughs> So let's uh, let's open it up a little bit, and um, I'm just gonna hit on the people that I know who have traveled and worked in different places. And uh, Rashid, you wanna share a little bit because you were American and you were uh, in South America and you were working in Chile. Is that right? You need to unmute yourself. Добрый день. Добрый вечер. Очень приятная, товарищ Катя. That's my Russian joke. Russian actually sounds okay right now. That's my Russian joke for the day. Um, uh, actually, uh, I, I work with, um, I, I teach uh, a university in Florida, and I've worked with um, a number of teachers in South America. Uh, and uh, uh, before that, I lived in Malaysia for seven years. So I was the trailing spouse, uh, like you, Katya, and uh, but I I cobbled together a career there uh, teaching English. But um, I, I'm curious about um, some of your um, uh, your experiences uh, working with um, businesses. Uh, do you ever travel with like a business delegation, uh, for example, in like say to Moscow with a with a German company, 
and maybe be their secret uh, interpreter of what's going on at the meeting in case uh, the other side of the table is conversing in Russian and you just pretend like you're, you know, uh, a German uh, colleague who just happens to be there at the table. Uh, All right. What do you really want to know? Am I really a spy? <laughs> 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 um, I don't. I don't do that. Uh, right. Uh, right now, I focus on uh, on working with clients online. So I actually work with people like this in class and Skype. I do have few few clients based here in Germany, uh, and I don't travel with them because their business is based. Well, I mean, they're based here and they don't want to go anywhere. But I do travel for meetings and conferences uh, around Europe. At the moment, I haven't been anywhere outside of Europe uh, simply because uh, it's kind of been logistically still a little bit difficult with family. But now the kids are getting older. It, it, it's hopefully, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to start my first trip to the US will happen at the end of this year. Awesome, and then I, I know Karen um, lived in China. We got the entire world here today. It's awesome, um, and she lived in China for two years. Karen, is that right? I lived in China for five years and Japan for two years, so seven years total in Asia. And you were working there? I was working. Um, I was working as a teacher, though, so I had a lot of free time, and I, I have to say, I, I probably learned a lot more than I taught. Um, just got to really immerse myself in in the culture, which I think is a very different experience than the high powered business people who go over there as the the expats and work seventy hours a week and earn a lot of money, but then don't get the exposure to the culture as much. That's true. And Karen, I have to tell you, I love your lower third. This is the cutest thing ever with that robot, and you got it down. That's awesome. Yay! Love I love my robot. <laughs> <laughs> I was inspired by your cartoon, or, or, or illustration, I should say. We are, we are spreading avatars across Google+. Plus. Every one of you guys need an avatar. Um, so, Karen, what was your experience like internationally? You were teaching there, but how was it like learning the culture and moving from China to Japan? Was it kind of... Was I, it I absolutely loved it. It's definitely not something for everyone. Everybody, though, if you want to go, I would meet other people that wanted to go overseas and were upset that it wasn't like America or didn't run the Western way. If you're going to really enjoy it, you have to just say, okay, this is the way they do it, and like it or not, I'm jumping in this way, and I'm going to go with their flow and not try and make it my, my little America or something. So I think as long as you enjoy the other culture and immerse yourself in it, it can be a really great experience. And I definitely know my problem-solving skills have really improved because I can look at a problem in a lot of different ways rather than just the way I would normally approach it. Mm. And, I, and I'm glad, can I jump in? I'm glad that you bring it up, Karen, because uh, I find that, um, like yourself, if, you, if you're just a kind of traveling expat, if you, if you go abroad, if you go to live abroad um, as an individual, you know, it actually, most of the time, it's more fun that way, you know. But, but for, a, for a trailing spouse, for, for that one who actually sits at home, you know, not that one who, who works 70 hours a week, but for the other one, they, 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 they kind of, they, they tend to stick to, within expat circles and they're all about, yeah. oh, the weather is crap here, excuse my French, you know, the food is terrible, why is it always raining, well, it's too hot, it's too cold, why do you do it the way that, like, why is it, can't, why can't I find, um, you know, American cupcakes or Where's German BL, <laughs> there you go, I mean, and, and it's always, and to me it's like, come on. I know you may be just not particularly liking it here, but give it a chance, give it a break. And I love what Karen was saying. And to me, it's all about respecting the other culture. Respect it, you know, and learn from them. See what you can get from them. And by doing it, by looking at the culture this way, hey, maybe they will let you in into their circles, you know, and you can actually go to people's homes and become friends and then understand why cheeseburgers uh, are, are not sold, you know, and by the way, if it's cold in Finland all, all the time, you know, which it is, there are ways around this, you know, there are ways of, around, like, having a great life in the heat, seriously, just, yeah, respect and don't complain, I suppose 
my two top sort of tips for all morning expats. <laughs> I love now, that. It, yeah, Blair, go ahead. Well, I said, Karen, your last name, Kwa, or, or what? So is that Jap That's not Japanese, right? Did you marry someone from over there? I ended up, I did marry uh, somebody actually that I met in Austin, Texas after my return to the U.S., but he is Singaporean. So, oh, Singaporean, okay. Um, from a Chinese <laughs> background, so yes. Wow, very, but very international. It, it worked out good because my mother-in-law only speaks Mandarin Chinese, so uh -huh. if I hadn't lived over there, I wouldn't be able to communicate with her at all. Absolutely. And Claire, you're living also in uh, Taiwan and China. I did. I uh, went over there, spent two years in Taiwan, a year in China. It was all back in the 90s, though, so China oh, wow. was completely, completely different. And um, I hadn't even been back to China since they've had the big boom and skyscrapers everywhere and all that kind of stuff. But I also ended up marrying a Taiwanese from Taiwan. And you guys have way more in common than you even knew before you got into this. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and I learned Mandarin Chinese while I was over there, so that I could communicate with my mother-in-law. I mean, similar <laughs> stories, you know. It's just the way it goes. If you and I like what I'm sorry. You're are you our main host, Katya? Is that right? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. I like what Katya said. I mean, if you're going to understand, you know, the culture that you're living in, you've got to be willing to take them on their own terms and just jump in and realize it's not America. And I have to admit, the first six months I was in Taiwan, any frustration I had could boil down to it wasn't like we did in America, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then I finally, it's like it clicked, you know. I made the switch in my mind, and I finally clicked, and now I actually love the some of, a lot of the tiny Taiwanese and Chinese culture, you know. So you love it so much, Blair, that you married it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so my question to all of you, since you've lived abroad for so many years, is how did you manage to get into the inner circle? You've been there. How did how did you manage to make local friends? What did you do? Uh, shall I go first? Sure. Yeah. Go oh. for it. Okay. I, uh, well, for me, it was easier to start with when I went to the UK because I was a student, so, you know, that, that was always easier. But really, whether student or not, going back to, uh, you guys, you joined a bit late, but right at the beginning, we've been talking about the fact that there is a, a mini beer fest going on in Munich right now. So, pubs, Irish pubs and drinking is a fantastic way to get to know people, even if you don't you are drink. not proposing people get drunk to get to know the locals. No, no, no. I'm saying that meeting people in bars, even if you don't drink, you know, go there and get a, a, a glass of orange juice because that's where people talk and that's where you meet the locals. And when we first came to Germany, there was, there was a local bar at the bottom of our apartment block and we got to know all the locals straight away. It was brilliant, and I and I came to Germany with no word of German, and I was speaking well. I mean, you know, pop German <laughs> within like a couple of months, and it was great. Actually, this is I want to ask the Americans, Paul and Blair and Adam, because in America you are you don't like I here don't know my neighbors. It's not a very common thing that you know everyone around you. Whereas in Israel, if you need a cup of you know sugar, you go to your neighbor. So how do you know the people around? your neighborhood if it's not something that the culture does. Paul, you want to jump in? Uh, well, I would say that that's actually, your observation is a fair one, but I think that that's something that's changed about American culture um, in the past probably 20 years. I distinctly remember when I was a kid having a clear sense that you did know your neighbors. Not only did you know your neighbors, your neighbors, you looked out for each other, um, you're, if you're, if you're, if you were out and you were misbehaving, your neighbors, <laughs> they caught you, they would handle that. And then they'd talk to your parents afterward. It was like this real community thing. And that, um, something about the way that our culture has changed, has, has gone away from that. And, um, we've sort of, you know, it's a choice that we've made, whether we knew it or not to isolate ourselves more. Um, and when I've had the opportunity to travel, um, that's become even more apparent to me that, um, that that's our issue and not the world's issue because yeah. when I travel I see how connected other people still are um, and it's something that I sort of mourn I guess <laughs> that we've lost that and, and 
um, something that I really admire whenever I get the chance to travel and I see that other people are still doing that. Yeah, and I, I would concur. Um, I would only add that uh, now I don't. I know the neighbors directly to my left and to my right, and directly across the street, and that's it. I don't. You know, I don't know anybody else up the street. It's crazy. I, I miss it too very much. So I think this is uh, our call to the return of the neighborhood barbecue. <laughs> uh, we need to do that. That's right. Now on the other. On the other hand, when we go to, we say we, we miss it, but if we, we go to other cultures, like when I went to Taiwan, we're not only talking, do they know all their neighbors, but all their neighbors know everything about each other. They gossip, they, you know, and that was hard for me to get used to. So you can go to the opposite extreme on, on that too, right, Ifa? Yeah. <laughs> in Israel, similar, yeah. It, it, well, you know, it's fascinating when I, in Israel, everybody kind of looks at someone, if someone is gorgeous or has a more or so, anything, right? People will stare. What you call staring, we would do that. And it's so okay. it's normal, right? So it's normal to just sit there and like look at a person and either, you know, admire their beauty or just, you know, just look at them. And my cousin, she's a New Yorker, and I remember going with, to a bar with her and we're standing on a balcony looking at the street and she's like, this is so weird. You're staring at people. I'm like, no, we're talking. She's like, if that was New York, they'd be like, what you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> right? So That's I true. come to the States and I get used to not staring because my husband always like, you're staring. And I go to six months in Buenos Aires and I sit on the subway and people look at me and I'm like, why are they staring? Do I like, do I have something, you know, not right? Like, why are they staring? And then I realize they're not staring. This is like, this is what we do. People look. So it's, just, it's bit, right, but it's very weird, like the nuances, like if you've been in a place so long, all of a sudden you're not used to stuff that you kind of grew up with. We're adapting to the way, you know, people are behaving. And what I love about that, it's like you judge your own behaviors, right? You're like, okay, well, what's wrong with staring? Like I used to stare, now I'm not staring. Why am I not staring? Like, what's the right thing? Am I doing it? You know, <laughs> like do, you kind of like, asking yourself what your values are and I love that because I think people who travel really grow emotionally as people yes. because you always right you always like self reflecting they do it this way I do it that way what why they're you know am I wrong are they wrong what's the right way to go about that yeah but, but that brings up a good good point you thought related to doing business overseas because if you're doing business overseas you don't have time Time to right. learn all the nuances. You don't have time to learn all that. So, how do you learn the most important ones that actually could be offensive to the people you're doing business with? That's a whole other topic. Yeah. You take Katya's course. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you do that, of, of course. Okay, no, but you, then, can pay, you can pay me now, Katya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then, Blaine, no, seriously, it's not rocking science. You ask. You actually go to someone and you ask, hey, can you tell me five pros and five cons, what I do, what I don't do? You know, what are the words? And, and better even, you ask somebody who knows your culture, so, so say somebody who had lived or worked or studied in the States and say, hey, you look where I'm from, right? You tell me what can I do that can actually offend your people. And I'll make sure to avoid that. You know, so, there's... Ask. Yeah. Uh, may, may, may I... Yeah, Olger, please jump okay. in. Yes. So I never lived a f longer time uh, uh, in other countries. Four weeks, this was the longest time. So I have no, uh, uh, I travel a lot, I traveled a lot, but not now. And, uh, but I do business international. So um, what, how, I do it a little bit different. So I look for the, uh, I check the country, how is the economy? what is the income situation of the people and then I decide okay I will go into this country and then uh, um, I check okay with what product line will I go in and then I look for the companies in those country who fit to the, to the product line who have a similar product or something else then I check the company behind the scene not this was this public available behind so, so the background of the company and um, then I choose the person who is responsible in this company. It's uh, normally the leader of this uh, company. And then I just phone him. Or, or yeah, I, I, this is what I do. I phone him we, we, uh, to a phone, a phone conference. And then we go the next, I send him information. And the next step is we phone again. So I did 
the last time I did it with this Nor with a Norwegian Nor Norwegian company <laughs> in Norway, and and so now this was six weeks before, and now we are doing business. He ordered already, and a, a big amount of products, and and this is how I do it. I, I check the country, check the company, and go. Just talk, mm. like you said, Katya. Just talk, because click with people. That's that's the point. It's like in 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 social media, clicking with people. It's about trust. I love what you're saying, um, Olga. And Olga, your situation is a little different because you live in Germany, but mm. then you look for business internationally. Whereas Katya talks about people who live and start working in different countries. Is that right, Katya? Well, yes, I mean, but right now I, I work with anybody, so so somebody who actually lives lives in America and wants to work on an international basis, I work with them as well. So now, now I work with a mix of people. So it sounds very similar, right? Like um, you would suggest doing what Olga is doing, check out the market before you even try to dive in there. Well, well, absolutely. I mean, I mean, right now it's kind of it's kind of like a giving factor. I mean, before you decide to go to a country, you are going to check them out, unless you have a particular desire to go and work in I don't know in Morocco because you just know that your product is made for them, or you just really really want to go there, or some other might even be silly excuse. Then you know, absolutely, you've got to check them out. In fact, I mean, sometimes, especially nowadays, you know, everybody should look into emerging markets. Places like Brazil and Russia and, and India, I, Nigeria. I think <laughs> Nigeria, yeah, Ghana. Yeah. I mean, those places are booming, and and especially for for like for my clientele, people who are coaches or consultants of, of those type of people who are based online, those are ideal markets to go there because the middle class is growing. The middle class is uh, is hungry for new products outside of their country. Is those are the type of countries that want to have foreign stuff. It's in within their blood, you know. Uh, for me, uh, you know, everybody knows that in the communist era we didn't have anything. So anything foreign, a chewing gum was just like a godsend. You know, give me that thing, like give me that foreign pen, I'll have it just because it's foreign. So it's within our culture. We want to buy. We're crazy to buy. And the best thing about this, I mean, it's not like really, really the best, but I, I say that pe those people have cash and they keep it at home because they do in reality, you know, they're still not used to their banking system, their banking system is not very good, or they don't trust their banks. So they do keep their money in cash, you know, still uh, in the bottle, underneath the pillow, in the freezer, whatever you call it. So there could be like nuances about how the money transaction is going to be done, but they're ready to actually give it to you. And this is a huge benefit. But so what you're saying is actually interesting because um, we are an internet business. Most consultants are, right? Um, how would you accept the cash under the mattress? <laughs> well, well, easy. I mean, I mean, if you if you if you can't do a bank transfer, which it could be difficult for some people and it could cost you a lot, I mean, you don't have to go as far as Western Union. You know, there is Western Union absolutely everywhere and and, it, and the money will be in your account immediately. So that's, I suppose, that's the best way. If you're talking about such remote places as, as Nigeria and India, you know, if you're dealing with places like Brazil and Russia, you can probably do some sort of some sort of other ways, depending on whether those people actually have bank accounts or credit cards. So actually, this is a great uh, topic to end on because you, Katya, offer a free consultation, a strategy session. Uh, to people to find out if internalization, <laughs> if foreign nation is right for their business and for who they are. And um, people can schedule that on your website, which yeah. is your name, right? Katya Bar, Barry, uh, dot com slash foreign nation. And we'll put that also in the notes and in the comments and in the event and everywhere. But if you are considering going abroad and actually tapping into these emerging markets um, and you want someone to help you along the way and help you with the rope so you don't have to learn it all by yourself. Katya is the gal for you. And um, you can just talk to her for free um, and figure it out if that's right for you. So we have yeah. three more minutes. Last words. Final last words, Katya. Yeah, well, you know, or if somebody needs a Russian spy or translator anyway, you know. <laughs> and, and I just also would like to mention that um, 
Um, I'm launching a podcast tomorrow, so uh, you know I'll share the link about this as well. So if you guys would like to know a little bit more, I'm going to be talking to expats and people doing business internationally. Those are mostly inspirational interviews. Um, if they're not going to be long. I would really appreciate it if you can tune in and download and leave me five star reviews and share it with your public. If you know, if obviously if it suits you know um, the tastes and the likes of your friends and family. Awesome. And then I'm sure some of you guys, if you uh, want to share your experiences, you know where to go right now. Um, Katya is very active on Google+. Plus. If you have any questions, you can ask her. And, um, and then if you guys want to stay a little bit later when the broadcast is uh, over and chit-chat, we can do that in the green room, post green room. I, uh, thank you again for being here. Next week, we're going to do something that uh, I will do today for the first time, and it's called uh, Tweet Chat. Have you guys heard about it? Mm -hmm. Tweet chats. So, uh, Guy Kawasaki is going to be on Tweet Chat today. If you want, I'll leave the information. But um, what's the difference between a Tweet Chat and a Tweet Party? And should you even worry about Twitter or get into it? And like, why do we bother? So, we're going to talk to um, a guy who does it very well. So, join us next week on Thursday, same time, same place. Thank you so much, Katya, for being here. And you guys, thank you so much for taking the time. And actually sharing your experiences. This is so, I, I feel like we found candid souls, you know, with so much in common. This is great. Thanks, Katya.